And now to our final conversation this morning on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Uh, we're talking World Wildlife Day. And of course, uh, world leaders have committed to preserving wildlife and to doing more in order to uh, preserve our planet. Uh, we've invited this morning uh, Mr. Yusuf Kelani and uh, Mr. Adilekia Ligbaja, both environmentalists, to join us and share their thoughts on uh, how we are celebrating this day here in Nigeria. Good morning to you both. Thank you uh, for joining us. Good morning, and thanks for having me this morning. Thank you. All right, I'm going to start with uh, Yusuf Kelani. Good morning. Uh, yes, um, I'm going to start with uh, Yusuf. Um, let's talk about World Wildlife Day, but here in Nigeria. Um, not long ago, I think sometime last week, we spoke about uh, preserving the pangolins and other animals that might be running you know, into extinction here in Nigeria. It doesn't seem like we care that much as Nigerians about um, animals, about wildlife, about our planet, and things of that nature, because we're too busy trying to survive. Um, so let's get your thoughts on that, first of all. OK, thank you so much. Um, as environmental activists, um, these are some of the things that uh, we do. We try to bring this information to Nigerians, and certain things that we do not take serious, we want us to actually attach uh, some form of um, seriousness uh, to these things. Um, World Wildlife Day is a day to celebrate um, the forest and all the livelihoods around it. And when we talk of the livelihood, we're talking of the animals and uh, different species of animals, even the trees um, in itself. And as well, we we'll talk about uh, humans as well. Um, it's a day to look at uh, the extent to which uh, humans have encroached uh, into the territory of these uh, animals. Then um, as well, look at some of those things like uh, some new species of animals because uh, up until it now and forever, we'll continue to um, detect new um, species of um, animals. And these are the days we try to identify them and to celebrate them. And as well, to um, look at um, um, the forest in itself and um, the woods. What are the economic advantage? What are the outcomes out of it? So it's a day to celebrate all this together. And at the same time, to protect the livelihoods, like we said, within the forest. We are talking of the wild animals now. Um, they have the right to life as well. And there are certain things, um, the, uh, the role they play in the ecosystem to protect the forest and also protect humans. So it's a day to celebrate the, these things and also identify those threats, you know, um, that um, these um, animals are actually um, are facing. So it's, it's a huge day. It's a day that environmentalists uh, uh, look forward to, uh, to actually celebrate and discuss uh, new patterns in this um, 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 in the forest and other things. So there are a lot of things to talk about. So that's just a basic introduction of what the day is all about. Okay. Um, like my colleague just mentioned, it seems that we don't have this fundamental care for our environment and the wildlife. And I think lots of this, or the, the majority of this, would be attributed to lack of information. So as an environmentalist, I want us to share with us the benefits and intrinsic value of wildlife and forests. I mean, let us know how we stand to gain the ecological benefits of preserving wildlife and conserving forests in the country. OK, let me start with what is actually facing us now, COVID-19. And uh, if you look at um, the, the, the costs, you know, some of the uh, costs being mentioned do not have been found uh, officially yet, you know, uh, from um, um, Animals Village. Now, what it means is that uh, from this wildlife, um, there are emerging, you know, um, diseases, you know, that comes from um, um, animals. And the, the, the cause, any emerging disease, it is usually from the cause you, you see, uh, medically we get um, kind of uh, these solutions. So we need to look at the interaction between the wild animals and humans. And look at Ebola, look at some of the deadly, look at, look at flu coming from animals. We need to look at what exactly is responsible for all that. What is our relation with these animals? Unfortunately here, um, we are still far away. We are still far away in terms of uh, um, wildlife conservation. And if you remember in those days, um, we take, we go on picnics to the Yankari Game Reserve in uh, Bauchi, um, even the visitation to the zoo. But um, these days we hardly go there because we uh, do not get that much, you know, for the um, wildlife, wildlife conservation in, in, in Nigeria. Even in Africa, you see foreigners coming to um, Kenya, to Nairobi, to Somalia, to Tanzania, where we have the main jungle to actually protect the animals. Because as far as um, the people there are concerned, they are more interested in the trade. 
you know, um, and this trade is leading to extinction of some of these uh, animals. So the same thing here, I remember some years back, I was going for a conference, and it was a time in one of the zoo, I think in Joss or so, Joss or so, yeah, uh, I think uh, one of the lions escaped, and they were trying to get back the lion, and they had to kill the lion. Meanwhile, you can use tranquilizers and sedate him and you take him back to the forest. And that's the level of understanding because you can't do that out there, you know, because why well, you'll be penalized for it, you'll be fined for it, you might even go to jail for it because we need to preserve these um, animals. But right. like I always say, we won't stop in our advocacy. We won't stop in what we're doing. We will continue to let the people understand the rules. So there's a lot of relationship between the wildlife animals and um, All right, let, let's um, move to. Uh, can you hold on? I, I want us to bring in um, Mr. Adeleke Alabaja. Uh, he was also an environmentalist. Uh, um, and I want you to speak on uh, forests now. Of course, you already um, mentioned, you've already mentioned um, the animals in Nigerian zoos. Um, when I was growing up, the Ibadan Zoo used to be very popular because it you know, had one of the biggest. Uh, pythons in, in the country. I don't know if they still have those things or if those animals are still alive. But let's talk about forest and what we stand to gain by preserving our forest here in Nigeria. Uh, what are the things that we may be missing out on um, by uh, development and of course uh, not taking care well enough of our forests? Good morning. Morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, for the forest, Good morning. Yeah. Um, the first thing to know is that the sources. Please go ahead. We can hear you. The wildlife constitute the source of all the food we are eating. Um, they were taken from the wild, and looking at the forest ecosystems, the forest ecosystem, the tropical forest ecosystem, especially is a major source of great and high level of wildlife population and uh, uh, species. And we've the, the moment the forests are de destroyed or degraded, then you lose the wildlife as well. Because the wildlife, uh, you know, plants itself is part of the wildlife resources we are talking about. Animals are part of the wildlife we are talking about. The constituents, uh, the, cons uh, the, the materials in the soil are part of the wildlife we are talking about. The ones in the oceans and the seas are part of the wildlife we are talking about. So the first thing we need to know is that we are losing much by destroying the wildlife in the forest areas. But all right, um, might be having issues uh, with uh, Mr. Dilika's sound this morning. Um, it's a, um, unfortunately, we also run out of time. Yusuf, uh, you want us to quickly step in here and uh, tell us more about um, what we stand to gain by preserving our forests and our ecosystem? Um, yes, thank you. Um, if you look at the medicine, um, quite a lot of um, um, uh, 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 um, uh, medical um, um, support um, from the forest, from the woods. Um, I say, you know, the hubs, uh, we have it locally here and even internationally as well. The, 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 the trees in the forest plays a, a major role, you know, in, in the medical life of um, the humans. And these are some of the things that uh, we should appreciate. Then, like I mentioned earlier, the threats to these animals, to the wildlife animals, is quite huge. Um, when there, there are certain places, it's in Australia, that we have a little of that here. Um, you'll be driving on the road because um, there were, I had this experience. We're driving on the road. It was in the US some time back. And we saw deer, you know, they were you know, running across the road. And you see cars, they run through them. And, you know, and I was like, what's happening here? Well, we discovered that humans somehow we have encroached into the territory of these wildlife animals. That is their natural uh, habitation. That is their territory. But as a result of urbanization, you have encroached into their territory and you see them around. You go to other places, you see fox on the road, like we have here, you have uh, dogs and other things as, as scavengers here. In some places, you have fox. On the, it's, it's even common in Europe, fox on the street, because you have encroached on the territory of these uh, wildlife uh, animals. And these are some of um, how, how do we um, um, put this in control such that they are not threatened and they don't go into extinction? And um, at the same time, those benefits we should get from them, we get from them. So, like I said, these are some of the things that we need to look at. Then, as well, the, the trade, 
Um, the United Nations is still so much concerned about uh, trading animals. Um, it's, it's huge. The elephant tusk, the rhino horns, and, and you know some of these animals, even the, the skin of um, the crocodile and the likes. And it's a major trade, especially in China, in Asia. And it's a major concern to the United Nations, which we are still looking at, because some of these activities you know, already led to um, extinction of some of these animals. And conservationists are really, you know, working on that because they have a right to live and they have a All role right. that they play in the ecosystem. Now, this let's talk to Nigeria here. Um, that, well, we, we unfortunately they, don't... We unfortunately don't have time to come to Nigeria, but we, we get we absolutely get the message, and we hope that the and you know environmental you know um, agencies here in Nigeria would continue to do the work that is necessary. But most importantly, uh, National Orientation Agency and the the campaign and the awareness needs to continue to be spread to protect the ecosystem, protect animals, and protect the wildlife here in Nigeria. Thank you very much for joining us, and uh, we Thank hope you. to speak with you again. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. And uh, that's where we wrap it, uh, mm -hmm. things up this morning here on The Breakfast. It's been a very interesting ride. Uh. <laughs> yes, I did learn a lot about the World Hearing Day, con the, the essence and the importance to conserve wildlife. So I would suggest on so your next holiday, just take, take, take a trip to spots in Nigeria where you can truly appreciate nature for what it is. Yes. So yes, thanks a lot for joining us on this episode of The Breakfast. I am Aneta. Felix. And I am Osao Gi Ogbawa. The news comes up at 9 a.m.